job I, they took out withholding. I said, who's this, who's this FICA guy? Right. Why is he taking right. all my money? Right. Yeah. It's the same thing for us because we make yeah. we, uh, owe so much, which my husband thinks is a good thing. I'm like, <laughs> but, like, we always owe so much. I'm like, oh, did you count my money from city council? <laughs> and my tax people are just like, yeah. chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. She's just like, you really pay that. You pay all of it? You owe it? I'm like, whoa. Well, I guess you got two of them now. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, I never got my badge. I'm going to have to do it later. So many things that life is safe. And I. Fine, it just needs to not want to update every time I open it. Oh, big and a little okay, bits and pieces plans. of stuff. Yeah, and I found it. Yeah. Oh, so we have complained about it. I'm not going to mind it again. Not the thing is that I think it is working to get into the reading room. I have the Wi Fi here. I just can't tell you that. I can't do that. I just want to do that to learn. Okay, I would rather be able to read some of the stuff that. Because I'm very, I like everything for my personal life and my business life and my city life to be very separate. Yeah. 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 So do you have, do you have an icon on the home page? Just put it in here. I don't. So I don't like this? QF city stuff on my personal life. I don't want to queue that on my system. Wi-Fi network, it will not allow it. Is that right? It says not allowed. It says it's not allowed. That could be fixed. So I'm not allowed to be able to read. You talk to the guys in here. And I sit in there. Actually, I'm not messing with <laughs> <laughs> the actual. That's why I read. It's kind of good because it's fine. Wait, what, what? It forces me to set aside the time. <laughs> you want me to give this to Rachel? <laughs> 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 it's about to. You know, I'm not going to hurt for that. Yeah, I'm not going to hurt for that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, and uh, I guess we're recording already. We'll go ahead and start today's meeting. Uh, it's the work session for Sheriff of City Council for August 16, 2019.
Uh, so I'll call the meeting to order at 3.01. Uh, August uh, 8th, council agenda items, the first items on the agenda. So under the council for August 8th, we have uh, obviously the roll call, call to order roll call, invocation, pledge of allegiance, acceptance of the agenda. Uh, is item number one, is there anything that we need to add, subtract, delete from the agenda? Okay. Uh, we have awards and presentations. We'll do a World Breastfeeding Week uh, proclamation, I think is what it is. Uh, and then we do have the City Hall Employees of the Year. And hopefully we'll have a better turnout than we had from the Parks and, Parks and Rec Department. Of course, I know some of those folks were working too, so it's hard for them to get there. Uh, next is the uh, City Manager's Report. Chuck, have you got anything you want to share with us before? Not yet. Okay. Uh, You'll find something. <laughs> I, I need to ask again because I'm just curious and I like coffee. The coffee shop in the library, is it there yet? Is it? No, is, it is it gonna? Okay. And nobody's not. open continuously. I don't think they've had any. The, the RFP oh, the is open continuously. They haven't had any posters I'm yet. Just gonna have to they've had some myself. interest. But there we go. Let's do oh, a council go. cafe. <gasps> So now we'll get back. On, now we'll get back. On, now we'll get back on the scene. Uh, so it's just an open. Yeah, it's open. They haven't. Uh, you got to get somebody to respond. Okay, city manager report. Uh, Chuck said he had nothing. Uh, just, just. Uh, I don't know if this is the proper place to put this, but uh, everybody should have received one of these. It's the city manager's evaluation, which was due to the Mine's in the car. yesterday. <laughs> to the, yesterday to the to Sorry. the. In my defense, my, my computer's been broken for a while. Well, it's a hospital. I'll go get it. Okay. Weeks. So <laughs> what I would ask you to do is is to get that homework's get that your yeah, your homework's not done. Get get that to me as soon as you can because what we do then is once we have them all, we'll provide Chuck copies with them. We'll set up our we'll set up our. Uh, meeting where we do the evaluation and and again this is a good time to do it before the start of the next year so Chuck knows where he stands and, and what else we need to work to improve uh, in that in that special meeting so I uh, appreciate your support on that I, I'm glad I got at least I got two in my hand and maybe three by the end of the day at least that's better than the last couple of years uh, I'll just have to admit yeah. okay so uh, new business item number two is approval of the regular meeting minutes for the 25th. Do we have any additions, completions, discussions on the meeting minutes for the 25th? Corrections, anything like that? Okay. Okay. And then we go to item number three, would be the approval of the amendment for, uh, for the uh, court agreement in Miss Yarborough. Are you going to talk to us about that one? Yes, Mr. Mayor. So this clarifies the amendment clarifies a, a section that the Board of Supervisors changed when the agreement went back to them and it just changes to one section section 4 in duties of the city where it previously said the Board of Supervisors shall consult with City Council on its selection of a new Justice of the Peace to the county shall consult with the city on the process for selection of a new Justice of the Peace that is the only change what's that well, in the county well, instead of and the here's, water here's, system, here's yeah. the here was the here was the problem chuck and i went down with the, when this was being approved by the county because we saw that we saw the change and we didn't understand it the way we had the language it could have been misinterpreted that the city was appointing the individual but under the law the people that appoint the individual is in fact is, are the, individual are in fact the, the county supervisors so we don't have a role in appointing so the new language we talked to them about it they were happy with it and it wouldn't, wouldn't be misconstrued and it still meets the same intent uh, that, that we had when we when we voted on it. Um, well the difference that I saw is said instead of the Board of Supervisors it said the county yeah. Instead of What's the council? Well, the, what that what that does is is it allows some room on the, the actually the board does the appointment piece, okay? Right. That was by an clear. action of the board. Yeah. But the consultant piece, it could be oh. between the two city managers. It could be between the members of us and members of their board talking about the individual. It could be a number of different things to do the consultant the consulting part of it. 
so we're not streaming. Okay. Oh, okay. So it means we don't have to speak directly with. Well, it's basically instead of saying that we have, instead of saying the the council or the or the supervisors specifically, the agreement can be worked out with the attorneys and and the managers brought and brought to us for for. So, discussion. Mr. Mayor, essentially discussion. how I would envision, and again, this has only happened one time. Right. So, and well, this is a one-year uh, agreement. Yeah, so, and this, and this is only a one-year agreement. So, uh, essentially, what would happen, I, I would envision happening is, you know, this situation would develop where an appointment needed to be made. Uh, I would speak with Mr. Gilligan. I would then, you know, meet with counsel, you know, in a work session, you know, setting uh, presumably to go over, you know, what their time frames were and to see, you know, about some ideas and get some direction from the council in terms of, of how you would like to see the process go. And then I could go back to Mr. Gilligan and say this is, you know, this is where the council would like to, like to go with it. For, for example, they didn't do that with the, the mm -hmm. JP, but mm -hmm. they did ask the mayor to sit in the interviews with uh, with, with regards to the new supervisor, so and that was I, done, and they decided who was going to be the new supervisor without me obviously having a vote because that's what the right. law says. Right, understood. And it's yeah. the same kind of thing. So it could be as simple as well. You would agree, the council would agree to send somebody, send a rep to, to go over interviews, interviews or whatever. Or yeah. However, it is you wanted to do yeah. that. So, but it doesn't mean that we're committing to a pro a mm -hmm. single process. It mm -hmm. could be. Hmm, um, for me personally, I actually don't have any problems with these changes at all. I think they make a lot of sense, and I get it. Um, and I understand that it's for a one-year agreement. I'm hoping that the next time the agreement comes through that we'll actually have some numbers from the county about how much it counts and how much it doesn't. And quite frankly, if we can't have numbers from the county, I have a lot of problems with their abilities to govern if you can't give us those numbers. Because I tell you what, if they asked us for those numbers, we could get them to them pretty quick. Okay, the totally agree with well, there's an issue there's definitely an issue with uh, the county the county My yeah county. Well, uh, and I don't know if they have the numbers right now we're hoping to be to start this process with the other cities uh, this month so Victoria and I will be working with them on, on that they you know they should have the numbers mm -hmm. uh, but it isn't uh, it isn't as easy as our processes because they're, they're their fines and everything go to the state. The state gets a cut. It comes back. Each court uh, runs differently. Each uh, JP fines differently, uh, and you know a lot of it is up to the individual. And so, the amount of actual reimbursement that comes in yeah, is different. So, so there's a lot of moving Based parts at the county level. There should still be a record. Well, yeah, the record of what is paid. Yeah. yeah. And, and I do understand that, but we should be at least be able to have it passed if we can't do future projections. Mm -hmm. We well, at least have a past. if we don't have the exact numbers, we ought to have pretty darn good estimates, you know, and I, that would be my preference to bring you at least that, if not the real numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know my name's off the window now either, so there is that. <laughs> uh, well, some issues. Okay, any, any other discussion on item number three? Okay, we'll move on to item number four. Uh, that's the interagency agreement with the school district, uh, Ms. Yarborough. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So last year when the partnership agreement was approved by City Council, it was pointed out correctly that there was very little protection for the city uh, for whatever investment that we put into that property if the school district should decide to end the agreement before the 10 years was up. And as the agreement is written, they could have given a 60 days notice and that was it. So what this amendment does is it just adds quite a bit of protection for the city in three different ways for any investment we make into the Rockford property. So if the school district would terminate the agreement before the 10 years is up, uh, they would have to pay us back uh, for the increased appraisal value of the property if they should turn around and sell it in a year. They would have to pay us equal to the remaining value of the life of the assets, what we put into uh, the property uh, for any improvements, and they would allow us first right of refusal to purchase the property if at that time they were legally able to do that, which right now they're not, but 
I put that in there just in case something should change in the legislature and school districts were suddenly allowed to sell property to other government entities and then we wouldn't have to go back and change it. So is that likely to happen? Perhaps not, but it's in there. So that's all this amendment is. Nothing else in the agreement is changing. And it just deals with the Rothery Center itself? Yes, it's the Rothery Center properties specifically. The fields? All the fields, um, the tennis court and basketball courts, the sports unit, and the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the, Roth the Rothery Center itself, though, the, the old junior high school is not, not in. Not this. Not no. This um, See, that's when you say Rothery Center people that have been here a while. Rothery Center the recreational properties. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. And that includes, the that includes the band room, too? No. The gym? Does it include the gym? No. Yeah. It includes oh, the, the gym. gym. The gym. It does include okay. the gym. I was going to say, I do. The athletic facilities. Yeah, the athletic facility, and then, we, and then the, the eating. The cafeteria. Yeah. Thank you. Um, question? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't include the cafeteria. Not the actual not the, not the classroom. Or not the classroom. Or no, the gym and the sports unit are the only buildings. Okay. Nothing that's in the Rothery Center complex. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all we were interested in, basically, anyway. were the fields anyway, correct? In the sports. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure, go for it. Okay, because I've not been a part of this. So I know the other parts of this intergovernmental agreement were already in place, so we're not amending, but I did have a question. Just, so we provide the uh, school resource officer only one to Buena and two to J.C. Mech? Well, that's another that's another issue that's, that's not part of this not part of this contract it was in it, it, it is in the contract right okay so that just seems I, thought, I thought we did one i thought we did one for the high school and so this is your school resource officer chief and one at the high school it's always been just one at the high school I mean, it had up yeah. to two at the middle school and they cover the other schools and too and they cover the other schools okay. the classes and, but right now we only have one at the middle school is that sufficient in a perfect world, no. We make it work. Well, the other the other challenge with that is uh, if, in fact, the legislature ever comes up like they discussed last year on providing, requiring school bo school boards to have resource officers and paying for some of them. So the bottom line is when was when is the school board going to actually pay for their own resource officers and do we do well, enter into a future agreement when that happens with them to. Uh, reimburse us for ours, or they, are they going to have their own little private force to look at the schools? So that's a that's a, a future discussion item uh, well, for the school have, board and, have and the legislature. They already yeah, have well, a private force at well, the schools. Yeah. yeah. Paid security at the yeah. school. And that's and 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 that's I guess that's the question for us too is if they have paid security. I know we run we run some programs there well as well. But our, you know, is is it our job to really in, enhance uh, what's already there, or is it the school board's function as government to do that? And we're happy to help if they've asked for it. I think. I mean, the difference too, Mr. Mayor, is that you know, police are armed and their school security. Okay, so you're just talking. You're just talking a guy with a with a walkie-talkie. Yes. Or a gal with a walkie-talkie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who is not. They don't have like the don't they have authority, right, or yeah. anything like that. The resource and they're not certified no. by the post or anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. yeah those. Are. Okay. Those All right. So that's the difference there. All right. So yeah, I just thought that was strange. The two at the middle school, seven hundred kids and one. It really, at the yeah, it really should be up to two. Kids. It should be up to two. Uh, I think in the past, and then, of course, those guys cover the elementary schools too. I know a couple of the schools have. Um, because I passed Carmichael and Bella Vista. There was a Arizona Ranger in the parking lot at Carmichael and two in the parking lot at Bella Vista. Rangers? Mm hmm And I guess they're there every morning and afternoon. And I think they also do it at JCMS. As volunteers. Mm hmm Keep people from fighting in the parking yeah. lot. The parents from yeah, fighting the, the parents in the parking lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Understood. 
Have you not been to school pick up and drop off? It's crazy. Especially JCMS. It's time to come. I got four. I got four. I know what it's like. Combat's <laughs> over. Combat day. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, so. Um, wait, what is the Sierra Vista Activity Center? It's the sports. Sports center. Oh, okay. But I don't know what we call that. Let's think that the district can use the Sierra Vista Activity Center. Those lists that I didn't know about. Okay. And then, so the city provides all HVAC services to the district? No, we don't provide any. That, that's an emergency agreement just in case. Last year when we did this, they didn't have any HVAC technicians. technicians. And okay. so they asked to include that agreement in case they needed to call somebody in. It's like, that's a lot of work. They pay they for not ever use. Yeah, this okay. is for they an emergency for situation. Yeah. They can't, since they don't have their H own personnel. Yeah. They do have their own person now, and they, they hired somebody as we were in the process of okay. approving this agreement. So it was only for, and it remained in there just for emergencies. So we are keeping that in there even though they have their own HVAC technician. Mm -hmm. We're compensated, correct? Yeah, it covers all time, yeah. equipment, uh, for maintenance, for uh, okay. time plus full benefits. Okay. Um, that's all I had on that. Okay. William, did you have something? No, sir. Okay. Anybody else on this item? Mm -hmm. Okay, then well, that that should complete our, our meeting on the uh, Thursday. So we next go to item B, which is Schneider Electric. And once again, this is Mrs. Yarborough and David, I guess. I think we'll start with David here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, we're in the final steps of completing the financing for the Schneider project. So I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update as to the financing and then. Uh, a little bit on the uh, project schedule, uh, you know, as it's developed right now. So, David. Um, our the financial advisor and our underwriter went out and we had six bids come in. Interest rates range from 1.99% to 3.66%. Although that 1.99 sounds really good, that was seven years, it was good that day only. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we didn't. We're not going to close until next week, either the 13th or 15th, and there was no rate guarantee. So whatever happens, happened between that day and next week, we had no idea. So we went with the next lowest bid, which was um, came in at 2.68. But also due to that 1.99 percent bid, which was a seven-year, not a 15-year. We did go back to the next lowest bid and ask them for seven and ten-year options because the final sales tax numbers of the year had come in since then um, and were up nicely above budget. And they came back to 2.48% for 10 years. And that was kind of the sweet spot between 7, 10, and 15. So we're going to go 10 years at 2.48%. So it'll be callable at 7 with no extra cost option to us. Usually if you want to earlier call leave, they'll put an extra couple basis points on there, extra few hundreds of a percent on there, and they're not going to do that. So uh, we are set to close next week. Uh, it's yet to be determined whether it's the 13th or 15th, but we close the next week and uh, and be set to go as far as the financing side goes. Do you have any questions? Yeah. I think you talked about private as opposed to yeah. others. Private placement versus a public offering. Um, these are all, this is a private placement. It'll save about fifty to hundred thousand dollars off the estimated issuance costs because we do not have to go through grading agencies. We do not have to go through the um, public SEC filings for the, would allow bonds to be sold to anybody. Uh, this is usually called a knowledgeable investor, and it's usually one or two people, usually a trust agency or something like that, who wants to buy these. So. Unfortunately, it's just some of the seniors in the area that have also had to buy these in the past. These will not be available to them, but with the lower interest rates and, and not significantly lower issuance costs, it is in the best interest of the city to do that. And David, when will the, you'll have the amortized schedule when you close, and we'll be able to see that if we want? Actually, I have it, oh. and I can, I can give it out, but... Uh, that's okay. If you can just yeah, either email it or grant me a copy, that would be great. Well, what we'll do is when we have the when it's all done and closed, they'll put a one final packet together. They have a lot of information, more than 
most of you will care about, but there may be one or two few. Some of us Finance find it people, fascinating. <laughs> one or two finance people will like. So yeah. we'll have the okay. final we'll have the final closing then will be distributed to all the council. All right. Thank you, David. That's all. Anything else for David? Uh, just uh, one thing. Uh, we're looking uh, at 15 years uh, initially, so uh, the opportunity at the lower interest rate to take it to 10 is going to be very helpful to the city in the future. And uh, hopefully we'll put a plan together, Dave and I will put a plan together where we can potentially uh, do the call at seven years. Because so, mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing, if you really want to look at it, this in a, in a little different way, yes, there's going to be a lot of good improvements in energy savings and, and other savings that come out of this. But uh, essentially though, as we went through 10 years of recession, we were not able to maintain everything in the way that we would have liked. So this gives us an opportunity to catch up on, on all that maintenance. And what we don't want to see is the city in that position again. So if we can call these in seven years and create some sort of a sinking fund to assist us with maintenance uh, after that, uh, that would be the ideal situation. So. And one more question. Do we have, do you have a um a roundabout number from the savings from going from 15 to 10, about how much that's saving us. I'll put that in the final document. The other nice thing about 10 years is you may remember from the Schneider presentation earlier, 11 to 12 years is when we wish we need to replace the uh, turf fields, which sure. is the year after these pay off. So you kind of have a debt service that's already programmed in. That, that one year you could take that debt service if we don't we don't pay it off early, and that would pay for part of the uh, the returning at that time if it's needed. That or it can be start to be put aside for that as well. And of course, there is a, a consequence to this, which means a little higher mm -hmm. uh, in terms of debt service payments, which will probably make things a little tight over the next couple of, of uh, fiscal years for capital projects, uh, but. Uh, Hopefully, uh, we can, uh, with the improvement in the economy, uh, get through that, yeah. and then the other bonds will be paid off. Yeah, that's uh, the other thing. Right. So, and so I, that's our hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I personally feel like um, the short term, 10 years is a very short term in terms of government, so I'd much rather see us do 7 to 10 years than extend it out, so I think it's the right thing. I do too. I'm just excited that we're actually going to be able to get some major capital projects Me out of the way too. that we weren't <laughs> able to. Do. So yeah. even if it means that maybe in the next couple of years that we can't do as much to be able to knock everything out, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Well, not everything, but to most a large portion. <laughs> <laughs> a lot do we of things know people the, have been asking for. Yeah. Do we know the amount? The and the, and the payment. How much that's going to be on a? It is going to be about one point. One is $5 million a year. Uh, I had one other question related to all of the work that's happening. In addition to the energy efficiency and the cost savings, does, Sh does Schneider put um, a reasonable or acceptable amount of attention to the sustainability or to the, to the uh, I think that's the right word I want to use, of everything that's going to be done, or have we put the, enough thought into, for instance, I think I mentioned to you about the lights, you know, or maybe it was Laura I spoke to, that I know we're using energy efficient LED lights, but as far as dark skies and all are concerned, have we worked through all of those issues that this is going to? So the sports field lights will actually be better than what we currently have. Um, the, the LED lights are focused directly down on the field where the, the lights we have now, there's light bleed all over. Yeah. So they are brighter, but they're focused in a different way. Um, Schneider has a nice graphic that goes through that, that they're in the process of developing some marketing materials to tell that story, and that's part Wonderful. of it. Wonderful, good, good. And, and this may not be the right time to go through all the same individual things that are going to happen, but I was thinking about the turf again, too and that there's so many different ways of, of doing that artificial turfing and how much effort has Schneider put into, are they choosing the turf? We choose or do the we, turf. Uh, how much effort and how, how are you going about choosing what is going to be best, not just 
financially, but also for um, drainage and all of that. So Laura and her team have been working with for months with um, Schneider Electric and the sub who's doing the, the fields are called, is called Hellas. And Hellas brought in, we, we looked at not just Hellas, but a number of different companies. And so they chose the turf option they chose based on the lifespan of it. The, the sub layer is actually a 30 year sub layer. So it's going to last far beyond any of us being here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the top of it is what gets replaced every 10 to 12 years. Um, this is not the type of turf that has the rubber pellets. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a pea gravel underneath mm -hmm. for better drainage, and then you have the cushy layer, and then you have the mm -hmm. actual yeah, pretty grass. Pretty grass. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just want to say too, you know, I I don't think many things have come up that we've talked about that staff hasn't really covered all of that. You know, they really looked into, and I know uh, sustainability and the environment is really important in our community. Um, I think one thing that I I know one thing I think about a lot is knowing that you guys are doing really your job and really getting into the details, but sometimes we don't hear that, and it would be... Well, that's why I've asked her to, to make sure we have Schneider come up with a program that we can present to the public okay. so they know the details. And I, I had a conversation with an old geezer today in the barbershop, and his, his comments about the turf were... Uh, are we going to require people to have a certain type of shoe? Because right now, the men's team, as he was using an example, would go out and they basically, with the, with the cleat or whatever they had on their soccer shoes, mm -hmm. would basically tear it up. And then when they play in the mud or when the, when the field is wet, it really wrecks the field. So, you know, that's something we need to at least consider what type of shoe is proper for that type of turf and, and at least ask the people that are playing to make sure they have the mm -hmm. proper footwear so we do minimum minimum damage to the fields. Mm -hmm. and, and when That's the kind of thing we need to get out of the public. Yeah. And when you talk about it, sometimes I think it, it's helpful to me to hear, uh, well, we looked at this, this, and this, and what we've picked out is this. Uh, even though I know you're doing that, I think it's just great to hear it. And, and of course, the public also enjoy, uh, appreciates hearing that, too. And but, the turf um, fields will also save 5 million gallons a year. Okay. That's major. Yeah. In the, in the city council office, there's a book that outlines it too. It says the different types of turfs, the different types of, that we got way back, way back, but I know there's a copy still in, in, the, in, in, the, in our offices down Thank there. Thank you, so, William. But, you know, not only are you saving the water, <laughs> but you're also saving the, the fertilizer sure, and the yeah. field prep yeah. and, 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 and the electricity. Yeah, and, and the time when the fields you know, have to be down and that kind of thing, which creates problems for the the various leagues and that kind of thing so and I think they're rated you also hear that artificial turf fields are so much hotter these ones it's a 10 degree cooler than surrounding air so it's they have that as well and that's the old the older stuff though yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. Okay. so that's I great. have the the construction timeline um, overall the entire project it's 189 days of construction the other major benefit of going with a company like Schneider Electric is where we would have to handle each project individually. They have the resources, and that's part of what you pay for, to manage all of these projects at the same time. So the work has already started on um, the interior and exterior LED lighting installs. They began last week, and that's every city building, um, parking lots, et cetera, and that's going to wrap up in December. Um, the HVAC replacements, the preliminary work also started last week. That goes through November. Uh, the coat boilers and the wave machine, we planned that to go in during shutdown. So they'll start work on that right as we shut down in November, and then that'll wrap up in December. Uh, the turf, that is starting fairly soon. Uh, beginning of September, we'll start in Sear Center. That's going to run through about Thanksgiving. And then Domingo Pies will start at the end of September and run through about February. The sports field lighting, that also just got started, and that's going to run through December as well. Um, the utility pedestals in Veterans Park, that's going to start in October. That's a relatively quick project, so that'll just be October, November. Um, the EOP uh, and the aerator replacements, that will start in September, and that's also only a couple weeks, and they'll wrap that up in probably October. 
which means um, we're planning to close out the project in, um, they plan about 20 to 25 days to close out the project, go through the final punch list, check everything, make sure everything's finished to our satisfaction, and that's scheduled for February through March 18th is the tentative final date of construction. So that's 189 just straight days, they're not, that's not yep. total cumulative. Oh, that's yep. really fast. That's really fast. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. So we should be finished by next spring. Um, they give us a whole construction schedule that's a couple pages like this. Yeah. So it's fun to read. Um, we also sat down with Schneider Electric uh, last week. Um, Judy, Judy's here. Good. Um, Judy and Tony and Laura and myself and the Schneider team and their marketing team sat down. And so what we're working on developing is a project website. So regular updates will go on, pictures. Um, we asked them in the first place before we ever started doing this, we said we wanted a video of everything they're doing here. So they're going to create a really cool video for us. That'll be at the end, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But that will be part of our agreement um, for to promote Sierra Vista and what we have. Um, Staff are currently working on putting together FAQs with things like what kind of shoes do I wear on the turf fields? Um, what are, you know, will our lights affect the, our deep sky or dark sky um, situation and so on? Um, there will be marketing materials created to put up at the sites. What's going on here? When's this going to be finished? We'll have roll-up banners that are going to be at um, different city locations that will say, what's all this work I see going on it's at like the library and city hall and, okay. and the community center and, and such. So people will be able to walk in those buildings and be like, I see all this construction going on down here. What's going on? Here's a banner that tells me exactly what's going on. Kind of like the bond, your bond dollars at work yeah. signs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We saw some mock-ups. They're super cute. So um, they did a really nice job. and. We expect to have those soon since the, the construction is has started in some ways and the really visible projects are starting in September. So those will all be rolling out shortly. Do they have their own crews? Are they bidding out or do you know? For the they work? subbed out everything except the construction management is handled by Schneider. Right, okay. So, so they're acting as a project manager with subs yep. underneath. Okay. Yep, they're the, Good. they're the prime and then they subbed. Good. Yeah. Were we able to hire some local? Companies. They hired KENG for uh, some of the work, and everyone, I'm not sure who their other subs are. They'll tell you we did write into the local? contract that every sub has to stay in Sierra Vista. Oh. So everybody coming in because we heard that somebody was staying in Tucson, and so Laura called them and said, you have to write into your sub's contract that they have to stay in Sierra Vista. Good. So some of that money that we're giving to Schneider Electric it's will come back to the city yeah. in terms of sales tax revenue. So. Yeah. And the other good thing about that particular aspect is uh, while we have an excellent staff and we have great engineers and procurement office and all that, it would have lengthened the amount of time to do all these things dramatically if we had had to go and gone through all our processes and stuff. Yeah, do every, every contract individually. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to save quite a bit. Of that. Yeah. And that adds cost. And I'm very pleased with okay. so far everything I'm seeing. I think it's great. And in terms of uh, economies of scale, like Chuck was mentioned, we, we had one concrete example of we had looked at re replacing all the lights ourselves. And it was over a million dollars. And being able to package all this work together gives Schneider Electric the opportunity to go out and get those economies of scale and brought the price down to less than half a million dollars That's for something like that. So it's it's just incredible what a company like this can do when you package all these yep. things together. Okay. Any other any other questions or comments yes, on the I Schneider have to project? Go back to an issue. Okay. Uh, back to um, the discussion we had before on the uh, funding. Um, what if we had another recession? What if another recession hits? How will that affect what we're doing? Well, what I would, there's a lot of what I would say it's it's it's, it's hard it's hard to really say exactly what would happen because it's the depth of recession, the length of the recession, all the other kind of stuff. But I will tell you that 
before, in this last recession, our debt was what 44 mil, and we we able to, we were able to meet payments, and we basically tightened the belt, and that's what you got to do. It's just like just like your home uh, home budget. Uh, you would you not you'd be eating a hamburger instead of the steak, and uh, you know making sure you pay your bills on time ahead of time and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I think to uh, Mayor, to, to answer your question, uh, Gwen, uh, we, we have uh, some additional cushion uh, with the two bonds that are going to be paid off in, in two years, which is going to free up about a million dollars of cash flow a year. So, you know, that's two thirds of, of uh, you know, of the payment we need to make on this anyway. But that Plus a lot that, of but these let me, items. Let me just, Say that if when we get those two built two, I guess it's combined one now. We when we get those two paid off, the council has to have the internal discipline to make sure that we don't say, oh, we got an extra million, yeah. million and a half a year. We're going to go spend it on something else. We need to keep the budget, our belts tightened, so make sure that that goes to what's already been promised. And Chuck, you mentioned, and after this is all paid off, that <coughs> we could establish a fund. That would sort of be, it's not the rainy day fund, but it's a, it's kind of like a, a sinking uh, fund. What'd you call it? A sinking fund? Yeah, yeah. what is that, what, what does that mean? Sinking. Yeah. Sinking? Yeah, they call it sinking it's fund because you're sinking money into, yeah. into the bank. Oh. Or so basically, you know, what you're doing is you're, oh. you're taking your, well, what would have been your debt payment, you're putting it into another account and using that for specific projects. Okay. So what they would figure out is what the depreciation say okay. is of all these projects over X amount of time, and then we would then budget that depreciation to go into this fund so mm -hmm. that we would have a fund already available for replacement. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, hopefully there is a, a recession or a large recession, and that freed up cash flow. I mean, we have you know many, uh, unfortunately, many needs that still need mm -hmm. to be met, mm -hmm. like street maintenance and mm -hmm. public safety retirement system, uh, you know, and, and you know, creating these types of sinking funds. So there's there's plenty of opportunities out there to spend that money, I'm mm -hmm. afraid. But if uh, again, if uh, revenues don't come in, I think that gives us an excellent cushion to be able to pay. Our coverage so ratio is still over seven mm -hmm. times with this. I made sure when we looked at the seven and 10 year options versus the 15, that our coverage ratio was still plenty to cover all of our stuff. And we have cushion within, we could lose, you know, if a recession happened, we still have cushion to meet our coverage ratios as well. And David, when you say coverage ratios, you're speaking of like debt to income ratios, yes. right? Just wanted to clear that for people. And obviously I, in this community, I don't think within the next seven years, we're gonna change to having the, the other option, which is to raise taxes. No. I don't think that's going to change. So that's that's no. one of the parameters the council needs to deal with as well. People aren't going to want to see their taxes go up. In, can I just Especially in a recession. Mayor, can I interject something right here? Is, is I'm hearing a lot of what ifs from people in the community that might not understand this. And my argument to that is always when, you know, <clears throat> like today I think is our one year anniversary for buying our house, our new house last year. But when, when my family made that decision, we looked at our income as it was projected that my husband's not going anywhere anytime soon in his job and, <clears throat> and those kind of factors. And if we had thought about the fact that, you know, maybe he might lose his job or this or that, we would not be buying houses or cars or anything. So I think with the city, we have to think of it that way as we can't, and, and this isn't to you, Gwen, this is just the people that are asking, we can't be afraid to, to step out and make decisions. And so doing these things are needed. They have to be done. We have very smart people who are um, looking at our finances for us, people that know and have been doing this for a long time. So just say to the public is, is that some trust is absolutely necessary in our staff and our council to make decisions that are the best for the city. Well, that's true, but I mean, I I understand that personally. Yeah. But um, you also have to have contingencies. Absolutely. If there are, for instance, the sinking fund. Yeah. yeah. And different things like that. And I so agree. I and and I hear. Yeah. I I hope that. they do. And and I hear that. And that again eases my mind even further. And and I think what I said to Victoria yesterday is it's kind of akin to you have more money at the end of the year than you thought you did, as Victoria's example was, and you 
pay that toward your house note or you pay an extra payment every year so that it pays down your interest and, and we're doing all those strategies and all those things so I'm very confident in the city's ability to make these decisions. Okay. Thank you. Can I clarify on two things um, that I should probably already know but so the electric pedestals in the park that they're going to do in October it's October, November. So in between are they, the, are they um, moving them or just rewiring? They're upgrading them. Right? So they're upgrading them, and there is, they're they're adding in the ability to um, move electrical around the park, mm -hmm. so we don't have to be locked into a configuration for special events right in front of the pavilion. Um, so it's it's twofold on the, the pedestals themselves being replaced and then what they're adding to the park for electrical capacity. The the amount of power needed is there. It's mm -hmm. just the, the pedestals weren't ever installed right. Yeah. Picked, so picked, a lot of <coughs> yeah, picked up on the same switch, so you yeah. have to switch. Yeah. Yeah, so. heard that. Um, and then you said the I knew we were doing the weight machine and the coat we said the boilers. Yeah, boilers. Are we heating the pool? What are boilers that for? Yeah, they, they do heat, heat the pool. The pool. Yeah. Not near hot enough for my liking. It's not a hot tub. It's a pool. It's still freezing, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> we have swimmers complain it's too warm. <laughs> so that's better than, than solar. So they, the Schneider Electric did look at solar, and the system they picked was more efficient and cost less. Okay. It's electric. I yes, it's either gas or electric. Yeah, it's gas or that's electric. Exactly, that's 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 exactly what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Not certain uh, much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you said. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Anything else on this subject? No. Then we'll move on to uh, reports on recent trips, meetings, and future meetings. Uh, and I want to hit a couple of future meetings first. Uh, we got the uh, Mac lunch uh, tomorrow at noon, so I hope to see a couple of aces there. Not everybody needs to go, obviously, but uh, we have the on the 13th in the morning at 7:30. Uh, everybody needs to be there to listen to the mayor pro tem give the pledge for the for the city. Uh, Everybody needs to be there with a cup of coffee in their hands and walk in the door. <laughs> is what needs to happen. We have that. We have our spotlight breakfast over at the college, right? So I appreciate everybody being there. Spotlight. Yeah, the spotlight breakfast. Service. Service. Severe. Service. The spotlight breakfast. Oh yeah. On the thirteenth. She was planning on being there. You got. You got it. On the thirteenth. On the thirteenth. Seven. Seven in the morning. Seven thirty. Six forty-five. Yeah. Breakfast. Yeah. I think. So. Uh, Are you gonna be there? Okay. Yes. Uh, she's got to. She's got to give the pledge. That's her job. This is mayor pro tem. Okay. Uh, the other thing I will tell you is that we got the. Uh, this will be our only council meeting this month. Is that right? Yes. And because of the League of, League of Cities, uh, I would encourage everybody to, at a minimum, look and see what's on the schedule. They should have a schedule already up on the league website as to what co what classes are there. Mm -hmm. And whether you attend the whole thing, whether you come in for a morning or an afternoon or a day or whatever, uh, if those, there are things there that interest you that, that uh, you think can make you a better council person, I would encourage you to go there. Uh, and I will tell you, when I was a first on the council, that's exactly what I did. I would go in and say, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. this is going to be a value, this isn't a value. And when it was in Tucson, we had the option of going up just for the just for the day, really, or the or the morning or the afternoon. Phoenix, not so much, but I didn't attend a whole lot in the first couple of years. But as as I saw what was going on, as I was learning my job as a council member, it became more and more valuable to sit in uh, those sessions. So I would encourage you. I would encourage you to do that. As mayor, it's important for me to know and and network with. Uh, other mayors and council people and legislators that will show up to talk about issues that we want to accomplish in the legislature, etc. So I will be going the whole the whole time. Basically, I may I may get a little late, may leave a little early, but I'll be there. I'll be there essentially the whole time. And I would encourage you to at least look at the schedule 
and make some decisions as to whether it's valuable to you to, to be able to function as a, as a council member. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, could we schedule or let schedule um, some some time during a work session where we actually talk about the different uh, ones that we attend or share? Well, we can we can we can certainly do that when we come back. Yeah. And share information yeah. because uh, you can't go to all the. You, there may be two sessions at the right. same time. You can't go to, right. and we've done that in the past too, where we mm -hmm. split up, mm -hmm. and then we compare notes at dinner or we compare mm -hmm. notes when we get back. And that's yeah, we can certainly do that. Do that. Yeah, that's something that Gwen and I and Hank and then Carolyn at this last um, conference that we would do. We would sit down with the agenda and talk about uh, what sessions each of us wanted to go to to make sure we we're getting maximum coverage. And that, that works out really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, have, at dinner that night or whatever, go through what we learned so it's fresh. Okay, so I would encourage everybody to consider, consider going. Obviously, it's not a, not a requirement to go. Anything else under recent trips, meetings, and future meetings? Mm. How heavy is that flag? <laughs> oh, it's, you can carry it. Is it Hobbit friendly? You, you start working out. It is yeah, pixie friendly. <laughs> you could attach a little wheel to the bottom. I noticed on the, the only name on there. I was hoping some other well, movies yeah. it's would be joining. Well, well there's, a, there's a parade of flags to open up, up the, uh, the, the first official session. So that means we have to have a flag bearer. And we're very pleased to announce that uh, one of our new council members has volunteered to be. It's the sucker that got <laughs> the, the, the flag bearer. Colin told to do it this year. <laughs> I had to do it as a new council member. Yeah. And that's Wednesday morning, right? That, yeah, that's first, that's first thing. 7.30 Wednesday morning yeah. practice. Well, there's like rehearsal. Yeah. 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 7 in the morning. It's just because they line you up. They line you up and show you where to walk and it's no big deal. And I have to wear a... Be there until well, we jump your name. So again, I love that you wear a jumpsuit. Okay. <laughs> 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 with a cape. Yeah. With, with a cape. cape. Don't make it worse than it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anything, anything else under item C? We want to congratulate um, Carolyn uh, for stepping up. Uh, for young no, professional of the year. Oh, that's right. Year. Professional year oh, award. Yeah. What gave you that? Special. <laughs> I'm just walking around with this one. Okay. And you're going to <laughs> Okay, board hey, and committee. You know? And we have any board and commission liaison updates? Um, the PNC, just uh, again, there is at least one vacancy coming up. Mm -hmm. But we have um, next week a meeting, and my understanding is that Jeff has come up with a whole work plan and things for PNC. So they will be uh, quite a bit more active. Okay. I'm looking forward to well, they're getting more. They should be getting more business now that there's there's houses going up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, may, how much control does the chair of a commission have over what gets put on the agenda, what doesn't get put? Now, there's <laughs> the there's there's a little difference here, and, and depend on which gen, which ones you talk, which board you talk about, or which Not commission you talk about, which which. Commission. The the, commi the commissioner can, if you're talking to EAC specifically, he can basically put on what what is recommended to him, and hopefully he's consulting with the liaison if there's something that's controversial or something that, that may mean. And he also works with the staff liaison if there's something that there's going to need they're going to be they're going to need staff support to be able to discuss mm -hmm. effectively and, mm -hmm. and make decisions or make recommendations on. But generally, they. But generally, the, the the person that should be setting up the agenda is the chairman or chair. Okay. Excuse me, shouldn't okay. say man. I'll chair. in consultation with the staff, right? Okay. It's just like ultimately, for me as mayor, even though staff does all the work, I'm the one that finally says, okay, this is this is the agenda, and that's part of my job. Just like the chair for the for the board, they should they're okay. primarily responsible. But hopefully, they're consulting with the liaison in the. And the staff yeah. person. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I was just curious. Yeah. And I think that's I think actually actually I think I read that somewhere in the uh, awesome. in the in the uh, I didn't go back. the council okay. or the uh, guidelines procedure guide. okay. the procedure guidelines. Okay. So I would say an update from airport that the the hours had to be reduced, hopefully temporarily, because there was um, they lost. An employee, or like one of their fuelers, so they only have one full-time employee at the airport now. Okay. 
Yeah, there should have been something in the refill about that because we had an inquiry about that mm -hmm. as well. So they had to okay. reduce. And I did a response. Yeah, reduce the number of. Or Sharon did a response. Our, the the amount of hours that the that the airport is open mm -hmm. until they can fill it. But I understand it's posted, so it's temporary. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Then the uh, future discussion items and council requests. Um, did we, a few years ago, we used to have an economic development newsletter or an email that we go on? Well, right, yeah, right now the, the uh, we're getting at an executive report. That changed all of that so that it was all consolidated. Okay. It just, when we, I saw Tony present on Thursday, I thought he did a really good job. He's not here. Um, but I was thinking it was nice getting those back when it was just, but... Yeah, it's in the executive. It's in the executive so. report, right. which get every month, so yeah. no reason to duplicate it. Yeah. But I, I will, I will mention that uh, we did attend a, an event uh, locally where Tony spoke to a bunch of Republican ladies, and he did a very good job explaining what was going on and how it was, how things were going on, how, what he was doing to increase our uh, economic development potential mm -hmm. in the city. And I think it was fairly well received. It was so good for Tony. Okay, anybody else? Uh, seeing nothing else, thank you for being here. Thanks, staff, for being here with us. And we'll see you on Thursday, if not before. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.